What we're going to do in piecewise functions, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to give you basically, we're going to kind of take what we did in our warm up and we're just going to kind of expose those to uh, some different, different basically types of problems. So let's go and take a look at a very common that we could see. So we can look at f of x equals. Hmm, let's see. So what I want you guys to understand when we're looking at piecewise functions is just kind of really understand what exactly the function is about. And again, when we're talking about piecewise functions, think of the word piece. It's basically a function broken up into different pieces. And those two other pieces are expressions or other two functions. So what we have here is we have this function f of x. And that function is broken up into two different other functions, square root of x and x cubed. But you guys can see those functions are restricted, kind of like what we did in our warm up those functions are restricted amongst a different domain. So a lot of people have trouble with this. The best thing I can do, guys, is say, treat each function separately when you guys get started. And then you'll start getting kind of a little bit used to it. So in the first one, we have the square root of x. Now, we just graphed the square root of x. So hopefully, this shouldn't be anything major crazy for you guys. We know the square root of x looks like this, correct? And then we have x cubed looks something like this. Okay. Now, what's nice about this is this is restricted from x is greater than 0. Okay? So we look at this and say, all right, well, that's actually not too bad because the square root of x is all numbers that are greater than 0 anyways. However, it says x is greater than 0, x cannot equal 0. Right? X is, 0 is not included. So we need to represent x 0 not be included by using a open circle. Okay? And then over here, it's saying x cubed, but only when x is less than or equal to 0. So just like we did on the warm-ups, what you're going to do is take this graph, and you're going to erase it. So this is the function less than or equal to 0. So it's helpful when you have a nice pencil. I'll tell you that first. And now what we're simply going to do is so now we're just going to combine the two graphs together. Now, think about this as well. If you have a closed circle and you have an open circle and you put the two graphs on top of each other, does the closed circle fill in the open circle? Yes. So now 0 is going to be defined. It's just going to be defined for this function, not that one. So the graph looks something like this. OK, and that would be your graph. Um, we could also look at kind of like the domain and range here. If you guys look at the domain here, you could say the domain is basically going to be all real numbers again, negative infinity to infinity. And the range, you guys can say the range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. This one? Oh, because I'm basically taking this graph and putting it on top of that one. So the closed circle fills in the open circle. Okay. Now, this brings me up to another really, really important point, though. What if my question 